The second reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 21 through 33. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the house, housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. May God had his blessings to the hearing and understanding of his word. way to begin. I remember an old statement. I don't want to use the whole thing, but I suspect you may have heard it before. So I'm going to say the first part, and then I'm going to change the second, which I think is far more appropriate in a church. Do you remember the phrase that goes something like, paybacks are, I'll say, not good. Oh, you all know the real word on that, don't you? (laughs) I'm not telling you what it is, though. (sighs) I have to plead guilty because I've gotten paid back. Would you like the longer story of what happened? Sorry, you're going to hear it anyway. (laughs) For almost as soon as I, well... A teenager, let's say. And by the way, I'm, I'm multiple decades old. I would walk through the parking lot to whatever store, some small stores, some big stores. And I would go to the, behind these cars, and I saw so many of these signs, I got sick of them. They were bumper stickers that said, know what they said? Ask me about my grandchildren. Why should I ask you about your grandchildren? Well, here's the problem. I've got two grandchildren. Sorry, folks, you're going to hear about them. Because I've changed my mind. Grandchildren are phenomenal. That is God's present to us for putting up with their parents. (laughs) I have a little one. She is two and three quarters with my wife. Do I have that right? Where are you? There you are, all the way in the back. How are you? I'm two and three months old. You heard it from Grandma. She is now two, she'll be three in December. She loves her grandpa like you wouldn't believe. She gives me everything she has. She gives me her sniffles, her coughs. It goes, the list goes on. Whatever she has, she gives it to me. But a little bit ago was the all-time favorite. She was in her chair, which was next to my chair, and we were watching cartoons. All of a sudden, Lily, this little girl, starts squirming and running, and I'm like, what is wrong with you? All of a sudden, she whips around, pulls up a diaper, and hands it to me. (laughs) It's a number two. (laughs) What am I supposed to do with this? We love her. She's adorable. 
And then there is the four and how many months? Ten months. Ten months. That's Jason. Well, tell you the truth, the other day I took Jason to the mall. And we were walking along and went into this one store. And I'm glad, to a large extent, the pandemic is not exactly over, but things have really loosened up. Well, little Jason is of that age. He loves freebies. Anything that he can get, it doesn't matter what it is, he wants it. So we're walking along the mall, and we go in this one store. And Jason's very well behaved most of the time. And off to a distance, we see this rather lovely lady who is talking to this person and that person. Then I saw it. She is handing something out. And I thought, when Jason sees it, I already know what's going to happen. He's going to want whatever it is, he wants it. We get closer and closer. And then what goes through my mind is, what if she doesn't give us one of it, whatever it is she's handing out? He will be heartbroken. Finally, we're right in front of her. And what do you think she did? She hands me the package. Well, as a good grandpa, I'm not just going to hand it over to him. I have to make sure it is safe. So I take a look at it. And I'm reading, for those who are losing hair, one drop. <laughs> Let me make this clear. <laughs> what are you going to do? By the way, today's sermon deals with hair. I should mention to you that those who, I'm not talking about color those who are natural. <clears throat> those with red hair have something like 90,000 hair, individual hairs. Those with simply dark hair have 120,000 individual hairs. And those that are natural, and I use the word natural, blonde, has 145,000 individual hairs. What this sermon says, and what Jesus is telling us in Scripture, is you don't have to be part of a thousand for God to be concerned about you. God has the infinite ability for details about an individual. He knows each one of us individually, and he cares about us. He cares about our personality. He knows us intimately and deeply. Jesus is trying to help us understand who God is. Jesus affirms that God has no difficulty in knowing us, in knowing all of our desires, our needs, our problems, our purposes, our goals, our aims, our motives. Now, I know there are some people would say, well, with everything that is going on in the world, God has to be concerned with the really big issues. First one that comes to my mind is Ukraine. Their electricity's been cut off. Their water supply's been cut off. Their, another country is trying to make the lives of the individual people horrible. I don't know how they deal with that. We get a little bit closer, and we think in terms of our own Baltimore City. I mean, it's like every day you turn on the news, how many people have been shot? I watched last night's news. Some guy was in his car and was murdered. Isn't God more interested in all these other problems in the world? How could he possibly be interested in me with my ridiculously small problems.
God wants to know each one of us in a very particular way. He wants to know our sufferings, our problems, the things that keep us up at night, the things we worry about, the issues in our life. I know there are some people who say, yeah, I hear you talk about God, but where is he? Isn't it like the old way of describing God in his relationship with the world, that he's really a big clockmaker? He got the world started, got all the seasons working, got everything, and then he walked away. I know some people subscribe to that. Yes, there is a God, but he's not involved in this world. But God does not neglect us. He never fails to see each one of us and to see where we are. We may be guilty of neglect, but God isn't. Can I tell you a true story? Is that okay? All right, we got a thumbs up. All right, good for you. Should I just tell you the story or should I tell the rest of them? What's the verdict? Everybody? Okay, you heard it. If you don't like the story, blame him. True story. During the pandemic, you know, people were looking at their houses a lot more and what, what needs to be done, what can be made better. Well, my wife and I were talking and we decided this is the time we need to do something with the kitchen. It was a, it's a very nice kitchen, but it could be made better. So we got a hold of a contractor, and by the way, in, during the worst of the pandemic, you waited forever for them to actually show up, but they finally did. We had a brand new, beautiful wood floor installed. All new appliances, everything. New sink, beautiful, it's quartz, is it? Countertop, looks like marble. It's gorgeous. Tell you the truth, I think there are times she loves that kitchen more than she loves me. No, no, I, I know the truth. Now, here I am. I, the way I operate is things that I do automatically, I don't really think that much about. I have my little routines, I just do them. I save my energies for the things that need a lot of attention. I have my routines at night of what I do and in the morning of what I do. One of the jobs I have before I go to bed is we have a coffee maker, a lot like you have in your church office. I pour the water in, I put the uh, container for the coffee beans or ground up there, put the coffee pot underneath. Everything is ready to go that in the morning I'm set. Do that every night. So in the morning, with, and the kitchen is only maybe a month old, my procedure is I get up, go to the bathroom, go into the kitchen, because I normally wake up before my wife. First thing I do in the kitchen is press the red button to get the coffee started, and then I go and get my cups out, and I get my pills ready, and I have a number of things. So this one morning, I come in half awake, and I'm walking over, and I push the button, and I immediately turn, and I start to get other things ready. And all of a sudden, I hear the shh, 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 shh. I look around. The coffee maker is on. The water is coming through the ground beans. Somebody, and I'm not going to tell you who he is, forgot to put the carafe under the coffee. <laughs> coffee over the coffee maker, the new quartz countertop, down the um, cabinets, all over the brand new floor, beautiful wood floors. And I run, get paper napkins. I mean, the thing is still coming out. I can't stop it. And I'm trying to soap it up, and, and all of a sudden, I hear this. She's awake. 
I can hear in my head. What did you do? However, she walked into the kitchen, looks at me, and smiles. Gets paper towels and quickly gets into sopping up the mess that I made. But remember this. Yes, I neglected to fix the coffee pot properly. We all make mistakes. We all, here or there, may neglect something. But God never neglects us. Never, never, never. I know that in this world, there are those individuals who say they love you, maybe not always in words, but you can see through their actions, there's always something a little extra that they do. There are those who wish to manipulate, wish to exploit, and that's how some people express their so-called love. But you see, God doesn't do that. God loves us freely. Like that illustration of the butterfly in the hand, he gives us freedom. The freedom to choose God or the freedom to say, no, thank you, not now or maybe not ever. I know when we talk about God knowing every hair on our head, I don't know, maybe it is an exaggeration. I don't know. I'll wait till I get to heaven and then I'll ask the Lord himself. Maybe it's an exaggeration, maybe it's not. But nevertheless, it affirms the fact that God has an unbelievable ability to know each one of us. And he encourages us to believe in our own worth. That's what the scripture is saying. Two birds are worth a penny. And yet God cares for those birds when they fall to the ground. How much is a, a penny worth? Well, I'll tell you in my own experience. I've mentioned to you, I walk through the community, I walk through the malls. Do you know how many pennies I have found on the floor? My wife gets embarrassed when I stop and I pick them up. I also pick up dimes, nickels, quarters, but that's another story. As individuals, we have an enormous desire to matter, to count for something. And Jesus says, we are valuable. Not because of our knowledge, not because of our degrees, not because of our virtue, not because of our good works. We value because we are children of God. Remember the story that Jesus tells us about a treasure hidden in a field, and the man went and he sold everything he could so he could buy the field and then go dig it up because he valued that what was buried in the field, the treasure. You know who that man is who went and gave everything to purchase the field? That illustration that Jesus gives us is God. He values us, considers us a treasure in the field that it's worth everything to have us be with him. We should also hold others in the same high opinion and value.
God values us. Not because of what, we, what house we live in or what job we have or what education we may or may not have. God values each one of us. What the Lord God says is this. I will not grant you everything you want, but I will give you everything you need because I love you. So I have a question for you. When you love somebody, I know if they're real close to you, we can give them a good hug, can't we? That feels good. At least a good handshake. But what do we do when they're way far away? And through all the new, new electronics, they can see you, you can see them. I was wondering about how do you express in a very physical way that you love somebody and yet you cannot reach out and touch them. I asked my neighbor, how do you show that? And she did a super job. She says, if they can see you like with some kind of video way, you go like this, maybe even pound it, that they're in your heart. And I thought, it's very, very good. And then I turned it around. How much does God love you? By the way, when was the last time we saw God? How does God show his love for each one of you where he knows each one of us intimately, personally? How does God show his love? Would you say it with me? You remember the scripture of John 3.13? 3.16, sorry, I'm working on it. I'm going to start it, and you finished it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And what did Jesus do? 